Well, hello there, motherfuckers. And welcome to your SmackDown. You know something? Yeah. What? 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 Boring up and down. We start out with Daniel Bryan. Uh, Bryan is cutting a promo. Ziggler has left the U.S. title, so he's gone. Where are they going to go with this? Every single time they've done a walk-off storyline, CM Punk 2011, for example, they never get quite what they're looking for. So, you know, Ziggler just... For no explained reason at all, just left the U.S. title in the ring. Ziggler's not around. There wasn't even any real talk about Ziggler and, you know, what, what does this mean for the WWE? You know, is he going to be working there anymore? We're moving on already. We're, we're moving on and we're going to have a tournament. Then Chad Gable interrupts. I mean, my God, like, you know, something... They should use Chad Gable's voice, they said, as like an ambulance or, or, or like police siren or, um, you know, for like a home security system. I'm like, my God, that wine in his voice. You want some cheese with that wine? My God. Holy motherfucker. I mean, but this, this guy sounds like the most annoying thing I've ever heard. An even worse voice than Seth Rollins, if that's even humanly possible. So, yes, what is Brian going to do about um, the tag title situation? Um, he makes a triple threat match. You know, uh, Rusev and Aiden English come out. The New Day come out. Still with the pancakes. I still don't get that. Why the fuck? Can anybody answer me? Why are they handing out pancakes to the crowd? Why are they shoving pancakes in people's mouths? Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin win. And, you know, it, it really is like they're making fun of American Alpha and everything and saying they're in a team together. And, you know, they're calling Shelton Benjamin um, the, you know, the new, J the old Jason Jordan. That's what Big E says. And, and, like, this is the most hilarious thing I was thinking to myself. What would happen? Remember Shelton Benjamin got injured? He was supposed to be in WWE late last year. What if he actually didn't get injured? Where would he be? Would he still be in this position? So, you know, Jason Jordan gets elevated to Raw. I mean, he's back in the tag team now. But we see Shelton Benjamin here also in a tag team. But, you know, what was it? Late last year, Jason Jordan was still with Chad Gable. So that would mean that Shelton Benjamin would probably be a singles wrestler. And he'd probably be doing a whole hell of a lot better now. So I think he's a victim of circumstance right here. Uh, that's kind of why you're seeing Benjamin just stuck in this tag team run. I mean, how many times have they won tag title opportunities? And they lose, they lose, they lose, and they keep getting... I mean, it's an endless cycle. I mean, after enough times already... It, it, it is time to just have them win or forget about it, basically. You know, you're going to keep building this team up just to have them lose when they when they get to the big match. Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan argue backstage about the U.S. title tournament. He says that, you know, he should have just made uh, Rude and Corbin for the title instead. Um, the Bludgeon Brothers defeated Breeze Dongo after the Ascension, um, you know, lobbied for a match for them, okay, um, you know, they, um, the, the Bludgeon Bros actually won by disqualification because the Ascension ran in, um, you know, and they, they attacked the Bludgeon Brothers, and then they just quickly ran out, you know, then, then they, uh, they say they got them a rematch, okay, you know, this is very uninteresting because is this going to lead to an Ascension Bludgeon Brothers match? You know, we all know the results of these matches before they even happen, so why are they even doing them? You know, do we ask that question? Oh, you know, oh, you know, they're doing something with the Bludgeon Brothers. They have a storyline. That's ain't a storyline. This right here is, is predictable shit right here, and we know exactly what's going to happen. Why bother? Ruby Riot defeated Naomi. 
Did anybody see, check out uh, the BDF network, um, Bubba Fudd Duncan, and, and he'll, he'll show you that you have naked pictures of Ruby Riot uh, that got leaked online. And I was like, oh my god, oh! Oh, no, 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 no. No one wants to see that. No one does. She beats Naomi. Then we got Carmella, who, by the way, is the Money in the Bank winner. Remember when she was getting the, these big promos and she was killing it on the mic during the summer? I remember them, but I don't, I, you know, I don't think the WWE remembers. So how are these people forgetting like who their champion is on Raw, for example, with Alexa Bliss, and then they're forgetting who their Money in the Bank winner is on SmackDown? Um, it's Carmella, by the way. You know, and she's out there, so they, they chase out the Riot Squad. Um, Rude defeated Corbin in a first-round tournament match. So Bobby Rude is going on. So, you know, once again, Corbin looks like a loser. They're building up Rude, but, you know, you notice there always has to be an exchange here. You know, someone has to go down, but, you know, it, it has to be Corbin. Corbin is the fall guy. I don't know where they're going. Corbin's career has been a, a fucking mess. Let, let's just say, I mean, from the moment he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, he's crying near the statue. Um, he can't even beat a guy like Dean Ambrose for a title. They finally give him a championship, and they make a fucking joke out of him. Uh, Jinder Mahal defeated Ty Dillinger. You know, Ty, has he won, like, a match, like, ever on SmackDown? I mean, I'm being honest here. Has he ever won a match? This guy should go back to eating Eggo waffles underneath the table because this guy is just, he's so plain and generic looking. I don't get why everybody likes him because they like holding up their fingers along with them. Is that the reason why we like a guy? Hey, why do you like this wrestler? Oh, I like the way how he holds his fingers up. Now, I can understand if it was stone cold putting the middle fingers up, but he's holding his hands out like this. Even Stevie Richards used to do this shit. I mean, it's not exactly original. So, this is their response also to Jinder Mahal uh, losing the world title. Let's just put him, you know, let's just have him go for the U.S. title. Huh? Of course! Oh, of course! Let's have him go for a title that he's already ascended beyond. Well, you know, the U.S. title is not supposed to be even with the world title because the U.S. is inside of the world, motherfuckers. And, and that's, it's a more minor title. It's always been intercontinental title leads to the world title. Why would you go back? Why would you even want that title? What would be the motivation for the character to want that championship? Why would Jinder not want to pursue the world title again? Why would he want to take a giant step back and, and go to the U.S. title picture? Uh, that, that doesn't make any sense. I've said this about AJ Styles, about Kevin Owens. They keep on doing this to these guys. It makes no sense at all. Why would a wrestler want to take a big leap backwards after they've already been at the top of the mountain? Randy Orton cut a promo. He says, you know, it's time for him to do what's best for him. He's going to enter the Royal Rumble. Naka Murphy comes in. They go, da, 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 go, da, da. I'm, I, I, you know, so you guys want to talk about me being racist and shit against Japanese people? I'll be, I'll be right back. I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. You guys done yet? You done complaining? You, you done with your insults? Okay, I, I'm back. All right. <laughs> so, did you guys have fun? Hey, all right. You, you all had a brief period there to get out what you wanted. You had a couple of minutes to scroll down, you know, on this page, on this video page, and say what you had to about me. Okay, now it's all said and done. New Japan, some Japan, old Japan, you know, whatever it is. I don't fucking care. I don't give a rat's ass what you say. Because 
at the end of the day, this guy don't know how to speak English. How the hell did he cut a promo like that saying that he's going to join in the Raw Rumble? I'm sorry, but when you have a globally televised program like this, that is fucking unacceptable bullshit right there. I, I, I mean, who can get behind it? Oh, it's part of his charm. You can say, oh, of course, it's part of his charm. He's a Japanese wrestler. <laughs> I mean, it's okay if it's supposed to be parody like what it was with Tajiri. But for fuck's sakes, this guy's supposed to be serious. And I'm just staring there at my screen just in awe of just how unbelievably horrendous that was. And why is Orton hanging around with Naka Murphy? What? Why would somebody called the Viper, who cannot be trusted, why would he be hanging around with a goofball like Naka Murphy? And then in the last match, the main event, Owens versus AJ. So, of course, Daniel Bryan tells Shane, you know, you know, they had such a storied rivalry, such a heated rivalry, <laughs> such a boring rivalry. <laughs> that one's mine. Uh, you know, they why not why not end 2017 with a match that would that would not stop in 2017? So if there were two rivalries, two matches that I could not stand in 2017, it was Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose versus Sheamus and Cesaro and Kevin Owens and AJ Styles. So here, here's the thing, guys, about... Okay, so they, not that they're bad matches, but they had way too many matches. I mean, to the point where they were having something like realistically 12, 14 matches this year. I, I mean, and Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, now, now Ambrose injured, so now bring in Jason Jordan... And start, you know, so, uh, another feud with them. I, I, I mean, I, I can't stand this shit. It's monotonous. How did they not get sick of doing it? How did they not get sick of booking this shit? I mean, unless they just booked the show and they're all getting high backstage or just drinking themselves into a fucking stupor and they're not even paying attention to the program. That would make a lot of sense, actually. I, I mean, this show... It, both shows, all these shows by WWE, they're all in constant flux. They're in repeat. They're in stasis. They don't move forward. They book the same fucking angles. They book the same fucking matches. They, I mean, this year was complete fucking shit. It was 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 Two thousand seventeen was fucking horrible, and this was the last show of the year. Could we at least go out with a bang? Raw didn't get the job done, so maybe SmackDown did. Nope, didn't happen. So there you go, motherfuckers. There's WWE in a nutshell. A whole year of reviews, and this was the last one. Da 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 Maybe do something to make people come back for more in 2018? No. What do we got? Owens beating AJ. So obviously now we're going to get a new host of AJ Owens matches in 2018, which pretty much ate up most of 2017. This is the rivalry that never ends. It just keeps going on and on, my friends. So people started wrestling and they never, never stopped. They kept annoying Brad. So he said, motherfucker. I mean, my God. When does it end? End this stupid feud already. End it. End it. End it. End it. Why do you see champ is pissed? I mean, you know, how many more musical numbers do you want? What do you want me to do? I mean, my, you know, what, what am I supposed to say? I mean, I don't know what the smarts, what does the YWC expect? 
You know, I, I mean, my God, I mean. <laughs> oh, my God. What? What? What, 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 what do you guys want me to say? This year was fucking shit. It was horrible. The minute they started getting anybody over, like Roman Reigns with Cena, they fucking put him back in the shield. Jinder Mahal, the guy gets in amazing shape. He's world champion. Let's make him look weak. Let, let, let him come out with two midgets. And um, they're going to help him win most of his matches, even though he looks like he could kill all of his opponents. He should have been able to rip Naka Murphy's head off. And, and instead, at the end of the year, how do we end it? How do we end the, the year of gender? The year of the Maha... I can't roll my tongue. Raja. Uh, I mean, what, what are... You know, come on. How do we end this year? In a U.S. title tournament, he's taken a step back. So how depressing is that at the end of the year? You know, seriously, they say this season, winter, is like the most depressing time of the year. And that seems like the case when it comes to WWE. Because winter means we see the culmination of all the fucking bullshit they've done all year long. And, and, and the thing is, it's nobody's fault. It's no wrestler's fault at all. It no nobody did anything wrong. Okay, some guys don't deserve to be there. Ruby Riot looks like she should be at a truck stop somewhere. I, I mean, you know, there, there's people that don't look like they belong. But the true fact of the matter is that nobody really did anything wrong this year. It was all creative. It was all McMahon. Everybody worked hard the whole year to try to, you know. Get, get this product over. Try to get themselves over as best they can. But, you know, you, 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 you've got a show here with terrible writing, terrible direction, terrible booking. I mean, what really is the talent supposed to do? I mean, it, it's like, it, it's kind of like a, an actor, a good actor in a bad movie. It, there's only so far they could take it. Well, there you go, motherfuckers. I'll see you guys in 2018. For a Raw review. This has been your YWC champ. And I'm singing out. This has been your YWC champ. And I'm signing out for the end of 2017. How's oh, it been a very musical review? Anyway, motherfuckers. Until next time.